More than 90 potential coronavirus vaccines are being developed around the world. Former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb talked to Face the Nation yesterday about when a vaccine could be available. Well, I think what we're going to have in the fall is hopefully multiple manufacturers that have cleared early stage safety trials and have millions of doses that could be deployed in large, large scale studies inside cities. And so what you would do is deploy the vaccine in the setting of an outbreak in a city to both test whether it's safe and effective. So you're continuing to study it. And our David Agus, Dr. David Agus, joins us from Los Angeles this morning. David, good morning. You are involved in helping design some of the clinical development of, vac of a vaccine. How quickly do you think, do you think this could happen? Well, listen, I hope and pray it's here by the end of the year. Um, data on some of the vaccines are mature and that they've taken vaccines that have been used before and put in the section for COVID-19. So they're skipping some of the early safety studies because they know it's safe, the, the majority of the vaccine, and we'll see the results over the next several months. If those results are positive, it's certainly possible that we have a vaccine in the fall. What looks most promising to you, David? Well, there, as you alluded to, there are you know, close to 100 vaccine candidates around the globe. And uh, you know, about a dozen certainly have science behind them that makes sense. And you know, there's the Johnson & Johnson, there's the Oxford University, there's the Moderna, um, there's the Pfizer. All of those make scientific sense and can be accelerated based on the data they already have. And so I'm encouraged, um, but the problem is, is that you have to make a very potent immune response for it to work. And we never know till it goes into humans whether that immune response is strong enough to provide immunity. That's the key question. If we get something to work with here, David, who, who would get this vaccine first? How would that work, do you think? Well, they say Anthony Mason is always first to get this. And then after Anthony will, uh, uh, no, uh, it's healthcare workers on the front line are key, obviously. And then people at high risk for complications and being admitted to uh, hospitals. Those are people with diabetes, obesity, blood pressure issue, and the elderly. Those are the ones that if they get the virus are the ones who get very sick and end up being admitted to a hospital. So we need people to pr uh, take care of them. That's the front line workers, as well as the high risk would be the first. Are you expecting this would be seasonal, like the flu, a seasonal vaccine, or a, a one-time shot? Well, I think with coronavirus, what we're afraid of is that the immune response will be good, but not great. And so what that means is you're going to need potentially yearly updates of the vaccine to get your immune response going. When you get the flu vaccine, it classically lasts for four to six months, the immunity to influenza. Um, the hope is with this vaccine, it will last till the next year and then another vaccine is given to basically boost immunity again and provide you another year of protection. But we're not going to know until we see what happens, until we see the immune responses. We should have the first data coming out in June, so then we'll know a lot more. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you know, David, there are some people who are very skeptical about vaccines. What would you say to them? There are people that are skeptical about vaccines. You know, I, I think in this case, we're going to have to do a vaccine no matter what. You know, the United States got, uh, you know, uh, dramatically lowered its smoking rates with secondhand smoke with the argument, it's not just affecting you, but it's affecting everyone around you. If you don't get a vaccine, the problem is there are a lot of people in the country who cannot develop enough immunity, even with a vaccine. And they may be some elderly, immune suppressed, cancer patients and others. And so we all have to do it to protect each other. This has to be a communal event in order to get herd immunity so our country is protected. This is going to be everyone stepping up to be part of the solution. And so I hope and pray that there aren't large pockets of the country that don't get vaccinated. Yeah. All right, Dr. David Agus, thank you, David. We're all rooting for this by the end of the year. Appreciate it.